This video is another exploration from Strategies for Deploying Virtual Representations of the Built Environment. It explores adding weather data sets from the climate.onebuilding.org site. We then use ESPR's CLIM module to convert into a form ESPR can understand then goes into establishing the seasons from that weather data, identifies typical weeks in the weather set, and then procedures for adding these new preferences to ESBR's climate list file. Most simulation suites are distributed with a few weather data sets. There are hundreds available on the web. In this video, we will select two sets for London from the climateonebuilding.org site and use them for exploring summer weather patterns. Returning to our Linux terminal, where we have models, we created a folder called weather. And then here's the climateonebuilding.org site. And we want to go to um, Europe Region 6. And look uh, for GBR British Isles United Kingdom, which is separated into files for England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. If we look in London, we see there are quite a few different file sets. London City Airport, London Heathrow. Usually there's two files, one which has a year stamp on it, and so that essentially is the last 15 years of data for that particular site. Um, so we're interested in London Heathrow, but let's also look at the London City Airport, which is closer into the center of London. And so when you click on those, you download a zip file. When you have extracted the zip file, then you get folders. We've got the two folders. If we go into London Heathrow, we say there are a number of different kinds of files. It's one that ends in .clim, which is the ASCII ESBR file format, and one that ends in .epw, which is the the format that Energy Plus uses. We can use the CLIM module to convert either of those two files into one that ESPR can use. Find out how to do that. We type in CLIM help. And in there we see that there is an act followed by an action, which could be ASCII to bin, which converts the ESPR ASCII file format, and EPW to bin, which converts the EPW file format. We then say whether we want to do it interactively or silently, and then we give a file name uh, for the file that we want to read in. Clim file GBR London Heathrow is the new file I would like to create. Act ASCII to bin silent and then the name of the Clim file 
And when I issue that command, there should be a new file. GBR London Heathrow. Let's have a look at that. So vim dash file and then give it that new name. So I see that's for London International Airport. The location, latitude, longitude, the year 2016. And if I go into graphical and plot the dry bulb temperature over the year, I can see that there are a few cold spells around minus one to minus four degrees. There's a very short period at 34 to 35 degrees, several peaks in around um, 28 degrees. Springtime is rather erratic. It starts warming up, cools down, starts warming up, briefly gets up to 27, but then goes back down rather cool. So the pattern is rather difficult. If we want to create seasons, we need a method to do so. We're going to present two different methods. One, which is going to use the analysis facilities within the CLIM module to look at degree days for this particular location. So if I go into Synoptic and choose dry bulb temperature and then degree days, I have a number of choices here. Daily, degree days, weekly, monthly, seasonal. Well, we haven't designed the season yet. So let's look at weekly degree days. Now the degree day method asks us for two base temperatures, one for heating, one for cooling. Let's accept the default values. We then get a report for the first portion of the year, where we have the degree days for the day, the second column of the total over the week, and as we go from January to February to March, we see that some of the week ramps up and down, but about the second week in March, it drops reliably in and around and below 60. Let's list a little bit further along. We look in May, transition from April to May, at some point we drop um, less than 30. So that might be around the first week in May. Oh, but here's another 30. So maybe that's toward the um, third week in May. It was reliably below that. We see the degree days for the week remain uh, below 30 through September, and it's really around the first week in October that it ramps up above uh, 30 again. And again, if we're looking for when we cross or get close to 60, well, that's in, uh, say, the second week to third week of November. Let's go back to Manage Files. And in here, we see there is a set of default seasons. First winter season, two months long. Spring, again, two months long. Summer, essentially, four months, two months, and two months. The, the year, the 1st of January, starts on a Friday. But we would like for a convention for the other seasons to start on Monday 
if possible. Here's a calendar for 2016. And so if we want Monday starts, this will give us a clue about when to do that. Let's take the first season and we want it to end on the 13th of March, which is a Sunday. And we'd like that to run the spring to run to the 8th of May and the summer to run until the 18th of September. The autumn to run from the 19th of September to the 13th of November. So now all these other seasons start on a Monday. Often we would like to run an assessment very quickly, say it's a very complicated model or needing short time steps, and we would like to run a typical day during the season in order to make an initial judgment of how a building or an environmental system is behaving. For that purpose, it would be useful to scan the, the weather data for the seasons that we've just defined to find out the best fit week within each season. So I ask for that. Again, I use the default degree days. I get a report which describes for each of the seasons the heating degree days over the entire season, as well as the cooling degree days, as well as radiation over the week. And then when I search each week, and I can give a weighting for heating degree days, cooling degree days, and solar radiation, let's just leave them equally weighted. And we'll search each of the weeks to find out which one is the closest for that season. So it's made an assessment um, for the first winter week. Let's do it for the next week and for the summer and for the autumn and for the second winter season. And now we find the menu has been updated with the most reasonable week in each of those seasons. Well, what does that look like? So let's graph the ambient temperatures, the seasons, along the line, and the little dash is the most typical week it's found during those periods. That's one definition of the seasons. If we would like, if we agree with that, then we can save that information into a block of text which then can be read in by ESBR. So I'm going to choose this list generate documentation, choose initialize, and save that item into a file call with a dot block ending. I have a look at what's in that file. That's a tag data format. I will need to add in the actual file name that I've created. For the aid, I should actually include the name of the file that it was converted from, but then here are the seasonal definitions that go into it. This information is then edited into a file called climate list, which ESPR reads when it starts up uh, to provide a master list of the known weather files, as well as the preferences for seasons and typical weeks. So that's an analytical approach to setting the seasons. If we look at that graph, however, we see that transition from winter to spring, well, there is actually a rather 
cold period below zero later on. And we might actually want to change the definition of summer to a little bit later because we see there's a cold period here, which is not particularly typical of a summer condition. So let's redefine the spring to last until the 22nd of May. Let the autumn run a little bit longer. If we then rescan and redraw, we get a slightly different set of periods. If we like that, and let's name that revised. Now, we have created a weather file that ESBR can be used. Let's export that file to a new ASCII compatible ESPR file. And there we are, GBR London Heathrow dot A. Converting from the dot clim file we downloaded gives us six data items. However, if we were to do the conversion with the EPW file, we also get the atmospheric pressure from the EPW file. So let's go and do that. So if I go back into the history, all I have to do is change CLM to EPW and the ASCII to bin. I want to change that to EPW to bin. And let's give it a slightly different name. Let's put a 2 at the end of it because this is the second, uh, a newer format, the SBR file, which can hold the pressure. So now we have a London Heathrow and a London Heathrow 2. Let's check to see if the Heathrow 2 also has in it the pressure data. I go into graphical, I see atmospheric pressure is one of the items that's included. Good. We proved that route. Now, the data is the same. We don't need to redefine seasons or typical weeks, but it would be useful to export and also get an ASCII version of the file to keep for later use. So we'll accept the file name given and export that. So we've got a .a file for Heathrow 2 as well as for Heathrow. We saw that London Heathrow had a very brief high temperature. How different are other places, uh, weather sites near London? Let's go and look at the other file that we downloaded. So let's convert and let's make a city file. EPW to bin, silent, and we'll use the EPW file. Let's have a look at that. Graph, dry bulb temperature over the year. 
Now we see a rather different pattern. There's a couple of very brief early cold snaps and also in December. The peak is only around 30 degrees. It's happening slightly less uh, later in the year. Uh, and there's also uh, an four or five days around 28 to 29 degrees. So that's a different pattern. This flower would be a useful alternative uh, to get a longer run of warm days. So I would like first to back up what I've just created. I write out a .a file. So in this case, let's go and try to do a visual assessment. So I'm going to do that by pulling up the default set of periods. Spring is definitely ends after the end of February. Let's try um, the middle of March. So let's use the uh, 13th of March. So that pretty much gets us past this latter cold spell. And let's also extend uh, the spring on uh, later than into May. So let's try at the end of the first week of May. Okay, that puts us as we're ramping up. How long does the summer last? Well, we've got some additional warmer periods until we have a we start to get down to around five degrees in September. So let's extend ourselves into summer, uh, the summer into September. And the 18th would be a Sunday. Looking at the transition from autumn to winter, you might also want to move winter a little bit into November. Okay, so now let's have a look at the best fits for that. Give them equal weighting. Redraw. Okay, so the typical winter around there, typical spring there, typical summer. That's not the most extreme, but in terms of conditions over the week, there we are for the summer, autumn. We've started on the cool down, and the winter is in this other cool down period. So let's record these preferences. Click initialize. Save that file. And let's see what it says. Okay, we still have to fill in a file name. Uh, we should change the aid to the actual file that was scanned. But here's our definitions of each of the seasons. Also included here are the minimum and maximum and mean for each month. The next task is really for someone who's an administrator of the ASBR system. So you pass them these dot block files. In their source code, they will find a climate folder.
and in there there will be a climate list file. And the format of that file basically starts with item, a name, the format we tend to use, country, city, and year, and then for Linux and OS X and Windows subsystem for Linux, slash all ESBR climate, and then the name of the file that we've created. And once that's in there, when Clim is run, we then will get the file showing up in this list. And when we select that, it reads that entry in there for review purposes, whether or not we want to use or select that particular file. We've now converted two different files um, for the use in ESPR and cre created their block representations, which then can go into the climate list file so that they are then available for others to use 